join us today as we enter the world's longest cave system. Welcome to Mammoth Caves. If you'd like to show support to our channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. Every click really helps our channel out and keeps our adventures alive. Thank you so much. Wherever I go, I will always know Everything I need is right here with me It's time to let it all go, no matter who knows Anything about me now I'm ready to see what life's got for me I got one thing left to say Not only am I sick, I get to do troubleshooting. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Well, we're trying to leave to go to Walmart and our remote for our jacks and our slide has stopped working. I changed out the batteries in the remote. Didn't seem to do the trick. The uh, motherboard is still getting power on the receiver unit. But for some reason, they're not communicating anymore. There she goes. Dude, okay, <laughs> so uh, we have this issue that um, if you hold the slide button in too long and the slide closes all the way and you're still holding it, you don't let the pressure off, it'll blow the fuse. Every once in a while I have to go in there and like reach around and change out the fuse if we screw up. We try really hard not to do it. The slide comes into here, so he has to reach in from this side. Yeah, last time I did that I was putting the fuse in completely blind and I was just fixing in there and it, this fuse I lost my grip on it and it went inside there and it was jumping the circuit on the circuit board and that's what was causing it not to work we solved the problem everything is good Fixed it with magic. It's the only explanation I got. Some kind of luck has to be on our side. We broke our step to get into the camper. We almost shorted out our slide and legs on our happy jacks. Then we got in the truck and the truck wouldn't start. So just enough wishful thinking, I guess. Boosted old babe. She's rolling. We're gonna head over to Walmart and probably stay there for a few days. We have yet to camp at a Walmart. We don't usually do the parking lot camping very often, but Walmart's got supplies. Doing a little bit better than yesterday, but still got the sniffles. Pretty much just the head cold at this point, so I can still taste food. Might be a cold mix with allergies. We're gonna go get a COVID test right now and find out if it's COVID. And either way, we're just gonna be sitting in the parking lot, just waiting this thing out till it's over, you know? When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for. 
spot in Dog Creek in Kentucky for the night and we arrived a little late. So we're just gonna head to our campsite. We're in B20. May 3rd, we are at Dog Creek Campground in Cub Run, Kentucky. And we woke up to find out that there's severe weather warning all the way across the southeast and part of the Midwest. So we think we're safe right where we're at, we're not sure. I guess there's supposed to be some tornadoes, hail, strong winds, lots of rain, flooding. We're right here on the water. Not sure what to do, we're not from the area, so we're gonna go talk to some locals and see what they think. I think we're probably okay where we're at. We've got our camelbacks packed with some food, some water, and some other essentials just in case. I'm trying to stay prepared. Yeah, so Nick's got some two-way radios we're gonna pack up. What else did you put in your bag? Uh, I got apples, trail mix. Um, we got a 72-hour food kit. That's it as of now. I need to put a knife in there and lighter. And just a few Safety things. Safety supplies, first yeah. aid kit, stuff like that. This is the calm before the storm. So weird how calm it is right now versus what I'm seeing in the forecast. It's pretty crazy. It makes me uh, second guess being that overprepared. But you know what? You should never scold somebody for being overprepared. All right, we talked to the camp host. They are not worried about the storm in the slightest bit. They said they'll come around and let us know if the lake starts to rise too much. They'll move us to a different spot. Other than that, we're probably good. We were all worried about tornadoes. Turns out it's just a beautiful day. <laughs> so it's five o'clock and it's really hard to believe that there is the severe weather warning that the news keeps talking about when we have this gorgeous day and nearly every cloud in the sky is gone now. So we'll see what tonight brings. It's supposed to be the worst in the middle of the night. Trixie and I have just been hanging out in the sunshine, getting some stuff done. Nick's still recovering from his cold or allergies or whatever he got there in the Smokies. hanging out in here and it was it was nice day outside a little bit overcast and we knew there was a storm coming but man this thing one second there was nothing the next it is pouring out there I mean, you can hear it it's coming down that. wow oh my gosh <laughs> that is coming down making a pizza. <laughs> the last two nights it stormed for a few hours and I want you guys to see how much water it's dropped. We're here on this little lake and now it's nearly up to our campsite. So take a look at this. There's actually a walkway under all this water. I'll try to show you where that was. This walkway here went all the way around the corner and now there's no walkway. That's a lot of water and it's so far it's only rained at night for a few hours. Lots of lightning, lots of thunder, very very loud powerful storm but days seem to be nice and dry so that's great for us. We're gonna go check out Mammoth Caves today.
going on the Mammoth Cave self-guided tour today. It's $23 a ticket. It's the only tour that's available. They typically have 15 other ones. They're not offering that right now. They don't know when they're gonna offer that. They make you do a 15 minute orientation before you enter the caves and then you walk around. You can either use the National Parks app to get some more information or to have some park rangers down inside. We're, we're creepy. We don't mean to be. It just works out like that. At certain locations that'll answer your questions and give you some information. It takes roughly a, an hour and a half for most people. It's not very far in there, it's probably about a mile walk. It splits into two different pathways and they both lead back out to the same exit. Entrance is exit, exit is entrance. We'll take you guys through that today and we'll show you what they got inside the world's longest cave. I want to welcome you all to Mammoth Cave National Park. We obviously don't have all the 14 tours or 15, uh, but at least we have this. What this tour is, is a, a mile of some of the oldest toured areas of the cave. Uh, the first people at Inner Mammoth Cave did so 5,000 years ago. The route you're going to be taking today has been toured uh, publicly since about 1860. So there's this beautiful walk heading down to the entrance of the caves. It's lush green trees and a bit of a hill. Well, we got a stabilizer and two dead rats. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to enter Mammoth Caves. We are taking the historic self-guided tour. It's the only one available. So this cave was discovered 5,000 years ago by American Indian explorers. Mammoth Caves are the longest cave system in the world and 412 miles have been surveyed to this date, but there might be more cave systems they haven't discovered yet. Well, these were placed in the cave with the idea that uh, by being in the cave, they become eternal. So these memorials will last forever being here in okay. the, the protected environment of the cave. That's interesting, but thank you. You're welcome. So these caverns were actually used for mining. They mined a mineral called saltpeter. They were mining it to leach it for potassium nitrate. And they were using that for gunpowder, to create gunpowder in some of the early wars. But most of the caves were actually explored by slaves. They sent them in to do most of the mapping and exploring on caves. And they were also the ones who did the mining. So the roof actually opened up in this cavern. Yeah. We're entering the space called Broadway, and over on the left-hand side, you can still see some remains of mining tracks. During peak season, over 4,000 people come in here daily. It's the second largest U.S. attraction next to Niagara Falls. Mammoth Caves is considered one of the biggest haunts in the world due to the mass number of deaths here. Mummified and skeletal remains have been found throughout these passages up to 20 miles within the cave. We'll see if anything shows up in our camera. It said that people find orbs and spirits in their pictures and their films. See if I can't see it, but we can hear it. it. Sounds like there's a trickle of water coming in through this crack in the cave. So this area is called the water clock. This feature, you can hear the water back there. This is actually a high flow conditions with all the rain over the last few days. But in the dry season, it gets down to a very metronomic, a very regular drip drop, drip drop. So early visitors thought it reminded them of the tick tock of a ticking clock. So we named it the water clock. We still call it that today. Interestingly, there's no corresponding feature right above it here. So we, we figure there must just be some kind of hairline fracture in that cap rock, letting the soil moisture and all the surface water seep through and 
Once it encounters the more soluble, dissolvable limestone below, it scours it away into that vertical path. The large rock behind me is called the Giant's Coffin. So what's the story behind the, the giant's coffin? Is it just because it looks like that? Yeah, basically. Early tours were not quite the same as they are now. And the guides would also provide entertainment. And one of the things they would do would be to open the coffin. Imagine if this was not lit up by electricity and the only source of light came from a lantern. Right. Pay attention to the shadows behind the lid. I'm going to raise the coffin. Right? Ah. Opening the coffin. <laughs> That's a neat trick. This part of the cave has much darker walls. I'm not sure what that's due to. The walls look black. In the early 19th century, they would bring tuberculosis patients here in hopes that the environment would help heal their lungs. I don't think it ever worked. This is actually where they would house people with tuberculosis in the early 19th century. It's pretty far into the cave. We're probably, what, three quarters of a mile into the cave? The land above in the cave below was actually privately owned. At one point, Dr. John Cron purchased it, and he noticed that people were coming down here on cave tours. They'd hike for hours, miles, feel energized, feel refreshed, feel pretty good down here. He thought maybe the cave area was benefiting them in some way. He had these two stone buildings and then a few wooden canvas ones that no longer stand built in the cave. In 1842, he moved 16 patients down here pretty quickly learned that the cave air was not good air. It's cold, dark, damp, and dusty. They would have had lanterns and fires burning nonstop for warmth and for light. So all the black that you're seeing in this part of the cave on the ceilings and the walls is actually soot from lanterns and fires. Wow, you can imagine sure. how that was affecting their already sick lung. Dr. John ended up canceling that experiment within the year. Eventually, he also got TB and died about seven years later. Those patients would come out, interact with the visitors, ask no. them for views of the outside world, asked to sniff their hair or their clothes because it smelled oh, like no. outdoors or sunshine. So there's no telling how many people left Mammoth Cave with an extra souvenir that year. Ah, well this room is called the church. They did have services here in the early 1800s. This corner protruding rock is the pulpit rock where the preacher would stand, or so the story goes. They lead the congregation down into the cave by lantern light. They kick some of those old saltpeter logs down, roll them out into the middle of the dirt floor that was here. And they'd use those as benches or pews. And then apparently he'd come along and collect all their lanterns, something like this, an open flame lantern, and climb up there to set them on the ledge above. That's where all the smoke and soot uh, would climb up the wall there, darkening that wall. And he'd climb down onto the pulpit and preach fire and brimstone with the silhouette and the fires behind him. Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be a ceremony to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Hey. Welcome to Raffinesque Hall. What they used to do in this area was throwing up the torches. Above you folks is part of the ceiling where it's all black. And that is from where they would throw torches. So they would have a stick so long and at the end of it was a hook. And on that end of the hook they would take a rag which was tightly woven and submerged into kerosene. And then the next day they would light them. Once they were lit, they would then throw those rags up onto the top. I want to look out now. It's like a mound of rubble. In 1881, Anthony Muzzarelli was inspired by the mushrooms they grow in the catacombs in Paris. So he started a mushroom farm down here. He rented this area right here to grow mushrooms. And they used the guano from the bats that live down here to help fertilize the soil. And then one day somebody poured the coal oil all over the mushrooms and destroyed them. Subterranean sabotage. Jacqueline, what are we doing? So 
so there's a few little trails down by the Mammoth Cave entrance and we're gonna go check them out and Trixie's growling because she's excited she didn't get to go out today and she's allowed on the trail so we're gonna take her with us. Sweet, we're going for a walk. Trixie, what do you think? We're gonna go for a walk? You wanna go? You wanna go for a walk? Yeah? Oh, good. This trail goes down to the Green Valley. Apparently that's where all of the water pools up that trickles down into Mammoth Caves. Most cave systems start with an underground river and it slowly erodes away at the limestone. And over hundreds of millions of years, you get caves. Right now during COVID, there's a lot of these caves that we're not able to see. So when you come, there's a lot more for you to see. Be sure to let us know what you think after you come and visit the Mammoth Caves. Yeah, just about a year ago, we tried to do the Timpanago Caves right when COVID first started and that was closed. That one had a really cool underground lake and here we are a year later and Mammoth Caves, they're open, but they're not fully open. It was still really cool. I really enjoyed that. Both were both very cool to actually just in the surrounding area and the hike and going into this cave, it was still really neat. It was nice to have a cave mostly to ourselves. Right now they're only letting 32 people in at a time slot and they've got time slot every 15 minutes. Ooh, that is some muddy water. There's nothing in there. So this is known as the Old Guide Cemetery. But as I mentioned earlier, most of the mapping on Mammoth Caves was done by slaves. Stephen Bishop was a freed slave that worked here in Mammoth Caves as a guide and explorer. And he was buried here in 1857 with some of his family. But we're hiking around these trails around the outside of Mammoth Cave. There's a lot of actual informational plaques here as well. You get to see the outside of the lookout point where it used to look out before it eroded and collapsed on the inside. You can see places where they found the air upwelling and led them to the discovery of the Mammoth Caves. Right now, we're headed over to Sunset Point. It's almost sunset. We're gonna get some great shots for you guys. It's a really outlook over there. Welcome to Sunset Point. This place is worth quite the view. I've been sitting out here for about 20 minutes, just taking it all in and just being thankful. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe. Every like and subscribe really helps our channel out and keeps us moving forward. Thanks for watching. <laughs> for the best doc duplication, doc that is able to do the doc. Yes, yeah. sir. And I'll give you some depth on everything. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, just hold it still right there. Perfect. Thank you.